All right, welcome. My name is Joseph Bernal, and I'll be your instructor this semester. Uh, hopefully you can see on the screen there, uh, we have the syllabus on the left-hand side and uh, Blackboard on the right-hand side. And we're gonna go through uh, overall the basics of the course, what to expect, um, what I'll be looking for, assignments, uh, textbooks, things like that, kind of how to navigate Blackboard 2 as well, if you're not familiar with that. So let's just jump right in. If you take a look at the syllabus on the left-hand side here, um, this is the course number. Uh, I have office hours. They're going to be from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock on Blackboard Collaborate video. So the conference video you can see with my cursor is on the left side of the screen. I'm sorry, on the, the right side of the screen, but it's on the left tab in Blackboard towards the bottom here. And that's where you can click and I'll be there. And if you have any questions or anything like that, between that time, one to two, you can come in and, and let me know and I'll help you out. My email address is there as well, as you can see. Uh, the book that we're gonna use is Philosophy Here and Now by Louis Vaughn, it's the third edition. You can also find information about the book uh, if you go to textbook info over here. So you just click on that and you'll see all the information you need. You're welcome to get it online as well. You don't have to get a physical copy. Uh, if you prefer an e-copy, since we're doing everything digital, that's completely fine. Uh, anything else that you might need, uh, materials and stuff, you'll see I provided. I'll give you that as PDF or some other um, source file, mostly PDFs. Um, if you don't have Adobe Reader, I would suggest download it for free so you can read um, any PDFs or anything like that that I send to you. Now there's two helpful websites for the semester. One is going to be um, Al Purdue. That is a good citation website and that's going to be really helpful for your final paper. You have to cite your sources. So if you're not accustomed to writing papers where you have to cite your sources, take a look. There's instructions to on that website to cite almost anything, podcasts, videos, whatever, but make sure your sources are cited. Uh, next is the Sanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. That's a really good website. So if you need more information than what's in the book, um, writing papers or discussion posts or something like that, go there first. Um, the wiki is not terrible, but it's not great either. And most of the time, those wiki articles reference the Stanford. So just go to the original encyclopedia there. The link is there, and it's really helpful. Now, grading. Grading scheme is typical. Um, you're going to be doing a couple assignments for me this semester. Uh, there's going to be a group assignment. I know people hate group assignments, but it's important. And you have to learn how to work together regardless. I have to do that. I, it's not, I'm, a, I'm not always a big fan of that either. But um, it's kind of a necessary evil that we have to deal with in society. Uh, we'll talk about some of that when we talk about political philosophy. So uh, group projects, um, that's where you learn the real ethics. And we'll get into that in a little bit. The group project is going to be 15% of your grade. Uh, I've already designated uh, your groups. So if you take a look over here on Blackboard and you go to either uh, assignment due dates, which are welcome. That's one place where you'll find all the due dates for the entire semester for every uh, assignment. So we'll, we'll go talk about discussion posts and quizzes and things like that. Um, the, the schedule, so this is your group. This is where you'll find your group. Um, group one, group two throughout the semester. So let's take it, ex for example, group one. You'll see a list there of individuals and you might want to notice your name already. Those are going to be our are the, uh, the first group that's going to provide a uh, PowerPoint. So you don't have to do a live um, video or anything like that if you don't want to. You're welcome to do that if you like, but the assignment really is just providing a PowerPoint over a particular reading in the book. So you're going to give a reading over the one that's designated here. So let's take example group one. Their presentation is going to be due, their PowerPoint is going to be due on April 2nd before 5 p.m. And you, I'll show you where you can submit that. And they're going to do a PowerPoint over 
uh, reading in chapter 2 by Arthur C. Clarke, The Star, and that starts on page 131. So it's pretty easy to find what you're going to be uh, working on as a team and uh, what day you, you need to submit it. Now, where do you submit it? And this is where you'll find all the information for the, the PowerPoint project. Go to assignments right here on the left-hand side, and you'll find, again, the schedule below and the requirements, the instructions for the PowerPoint. Um, make sure you read those carefully. There's a grading rubric that I go by. It's right there. This is how I'm going to grade your presentation based on these criteria. So make sure it's a checklist for yourself. Make sure your, your group works together and you're doing all that together. Now, the next part of that is the report. So again, I know people have trouble working together. There's some people feel like uh, the person's not, you know, sharing their workload. Or they're not working together. This is where you have a chance to report. So this is the report. This is going to be um, uh, another 15% of your grade. Now, one person in the group only has to submit PowerPoint. So not everybody has to submit. Just one person, the leader of your group, whoever you decide, they're going to submit. Now, the report, though, every individual in the group has to submit a report. And so what is the report? So if you go to group PowerPoint here, report, um, you'll download this particular document. And I'll just open it real fast to show you what it looks like. And you're going to fill out this document, your name, the chapter, whatever you uh, your group was responsible for the due date, activities completed, so what was accomplished, the task, the group member's name, so divide up the work with by their name, so their name goes on the right in the middle column here, on the left column, what they're responsible for, and by when they should have reported to their group. So say, well, you're supposed to do the first two slides, for example, and we need that by Tuesday, then that should be documented here. Any issues that came up, please let me know. Comments, contributions, who did what, were there any problems like that? Uh, that all goes in the boxes here. So make sure you save a copy of that, and you're going to submit that the same day that your group submits the PowerPoint. So that's the, that's the report. And you just click here to submit it, so you just click the title, and then you're going to attach the Word document there, and then click Submit. So that's the first two, uh, I guess the first chunk of the assignment. The second are the discussion posts. There's going to be seven discussion posts throughout the, this uh, mini master. So again, 15% um, for the discussion posts altogether. And also 15% for the responses. So you have to respond to other people's posts. So you get credit for posting and you get credit for responding to other people's posts. Now, I have very strict rules about this because I know people that have been teaching a while now, you know, they'll come up with excuses of like, well, you know, it's only one sentence or whatever. Or it's like, yeah, that was a great comment or I really like what you said. And that's all you say. It's not really informative. It doesn't really show me that you know what you're talking about. So I've made the requirement that your post, when you respond to the discussion um, prompt that I provide, it should be at least three paragraphs, three full paragraphs. Now, your response to somebody's uh, post should be at least two paragraphs. Give them feedback, give them something that they can use and they can that actually helps them. And you can find those if you go to the discussion board on Blackboard, the tab right here under Assignments. You'll see a video if you've never uh, done a discussion board on Blackboard before. There's an instructional video there. And our first one, you just want to introduce yourself, click on it, um, and then you'll post, you know, some small introduction. Now, once we get started later in the semester, 
but the actual pose, you'll work here and you'll see uh, instructions on how to do everything. And then once you click on it and you create a thread, then the prompt will pop up and then you write. So you can't see anybody else's pose unless until you put your own post up. So there's no copy and pasting between it, uh, each other and say, oh, I really like so-and-so's response and I'll just copy and paste that one and use it as mine. You can't see anybody until um, you complete your post. So that's going to go on and you'll see um, the dates for that are on the syllabus and also on the, um, the due dates up here in Blackboard as well. So, but always go to the syllabus. It's probably the easiest thing to do. All the information is there. Uh, the first post is going to open, has already opened up today, and then it will close on March 29th at 11 p.m. So you'll see there's an exact schedule for everything. 7 a.m. they open up on a particular day, and you get about a week, and then they close on a particular day at 11 p.m. So anytime between then, you can provide your submission. And what is it going to be over? Whatever the corresponding week was. So whatever we did on week one, that's what the first one's going to be about, whatever we covered in week two, et cetera. And the responses, again, you're going to respond, and I'll keep track of everybody's responses, and you'll get credit for that. Make sure there are at least two paragraphs. Uh, basic Medicaid rules. Um, this is a philosophy course. We're talking about critical thinking, critical reasoning. We really want to get into um not a, a higher level of criticism people kind of usually interpret criticism as something bad it's not always bad it's just how it's done if you're done in, in with reason clear uh approach you're not attacking the person personally it's not an emotional thing it's something clear you actually have good reasons why this is correct or this is not correct that's what i'm looking for you look over some of the um rules but uh be civil uh, i do encourage disagreement but in a philosophical sense like i said good strong reasons logic not just um attacking people that's not what we do in philosophy now you'll also have quizzes the quizzes are going to be worth 20 percent altogether you have seven quizzes they're already designated you can see there now they're mostly multiple choice fill in the blank uh you have 20 minutes to do the quiz um they're usually roughly around 15 questions and you have three chances so i'm trying to be generous here you need three chances to um take the quiz during the period of time where you can take the quiz so for example quiz one opens up today and it will close on march 29th and it's over the stuff that we should be covering this week. So you have three chances to take it. Um, you can take one today. You can take one on Wednesday. And then, you know, it's up to you. And I'll take the highest score out of the three. However, the questions are ran randomized by from a pool. So you may not get the exact same questions. So I know some people will try to, you know, get around it and maybe... Um, you know, kind of like take a picture of the screen or something, or, you know, um, they're going to get new questions. You might not get the same one. So the best thing to do is actually just study and read. There's a great um, also practice quizzes. Uh, if you get the book, if you, it shows you the website, um, and there's a student uh practice quizzes on their website you can take them there'll be similar questions some might be the same some might be different but you can practice there too as well you can always ask me questions um that's fine uh but just letting you know and you won't see which ones you got wrong uh you'll see how many you got wrong after you take it but you won't see which ones until after the due date after later then you'll see um, but I will give you the best score out of those three. Now, make sure you don't try to take it uh, using your phone, your smartphone. I discourage really using any uh, mobile device, like my iPhone or something, 
when you're taking these quizzes or doing anything here. Um, I'm actually programming right now. I'm learning how to make uh, apps and the way you make apps is completely different from how you structure a program here on a regular PC. So uh, it's not always going to look great. It not, might not be compatible. So I wouldn't take the chance of trying to do it off your phone. Um, stick with one computer, stay with that computer uh, to take all your quizzes. Um, make sure, and here's a link here on the syllabus, that uh, your browser is up to date. You don't need to update anything and everything's working correctly before you get started taking the quizzes. And then finally, the last thing is there's going to be a final paper. Uh, it's going to be worth 20% of your grade. And it's going to be personal, but it's also going to be comprehensive as well. So you're taking everything that we learned throughout the semester, and then you're applying it to your own life. So this is where I really want you to take away something from this class. So how how does the issues, uh, the stuff that we talked about throughout the semester, take something from what we talked about, the philosopher or theory, and how is that relevant to your future profession? So if you're a psychology major, if you're a criminal justice major, how does well, something we talked about relate to a problem you're going to face in that profession? And believe me, uh, with philosophy, it, you can take any profession, dance, art, physics, you be a physicist, it will always be relevant. If you need some help, that's what I'm here for. But you're going to be developing that final paper. And we'll go into more detail later when we get closer to that. But it's already heads up. You know what uh, we're going to be going for. Uh, I think it would be really difficult to try to complete it right now when we just started. Uh, you won't have the background yet, uh, but you will in time. Um, grading feedback, give me at least um, a week to get your grades back. I uh, have other classes. You know, I'm juggling my classes. All, all, I'm taking programming classes, so um, give me some time. About a week, if you don't hear anything, make sure you email me and I'll try to respond. Um, that's actually something I did want to mention real quick. Um, when you email me, uh, Please give me about 48 hours to respond. Um, I'm not online all the time, so I can't just respond right away as soon as you send it. So give me some time to do that. Let's see what else. Uh, attendance, I'm not really taking attendance, but what I'm looking for is that I will keep an eye on, are you logging in? Are you um, engaging? Are you doing the discussion post? If it looks like you're not really engaged, you're kind of just blowing off this class, uh, I may reach out to you, um, maybe try to work with you. But if you're, if you're not willing to work, then I might drop you from the course. So keep that in mind. I do hold that, um, I guess, power in reserve if I need to use it. But usually I don't, but keep that in mind. Um, if you need any help, um, now, usually I don't uh, accept late work or makeup assignments. You see everything is already set. You know exactly when something is due. If you need to make arrangements, you can do so now, like ahead of time, not the last minute, or like some students have been in the past, try to tell me two weeks afterwards, you know, oh, I forgot to take the exam. It's like, well, it's kind of late for that. Um, so try to tell me ahead of time. I know uh, life is unpredictable. You. If it's a serious issue, hospital, stuff like that, you're welcome to talk to me. I will work with you on that, but uh, don't abuse that. And uh, so be careful of that. And please tell me ahead of time if you need to uh, work something out. Disabled Student Services, they're there. They're there to help. If you're a registered with them, please let me know. And please have them contact me as well so I can make any arrangements. Plagiarism and cheating. Um, I'll just give you a heads up that uh, there's a program in Blackboard, scans everything, it searches through the entire internet database and sees if there's any plagiarism going on. So please don't try that. I've been teaching for a while. It's also really obvious in philosophy uh, when you don't know what you're talking about and you're just kind of copying and pasting the answers, like it's going to be 
painfully obvious to me. What I'm not looking for anybody to be an expert in this field. This is an introduction to philosophy, but I am looking for effort. I want a good effort, a good try, not just trying to copy and paste and give me the right answer. Because you'll find in philosophy it's going to be actually really difficult to get the right answer. Um, disorderly contact, this was usually an issue in face-to-face, -face, but if you become rude or disrespectful, like I mentioned online, then I can't take actions um, to withdraw you from the course. Uh, financial aid, if you need to drop the course, but speak to financial aid office first if you're under financial aid. I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to give you advice on that. Um, but I will point you to that direction. Um, and please contact me um, through the official uh, EPCC email system. Uh, please don't use your personal Gmail or whatever account because uh, if for some reason I don't receive the message or something or you send me something, uh, there's no way to track that and help you out. So there's no evidence for that. It's only if you use the DPCC system that uh, we can track what happened. And so the schedule, you'll see we're going to take each section, each chapter a week because it's an accelerated course. We're moving kind of fast, so you do have to keep up. Uh, your assignments every week, you'll have a quiz and you'll have a discussion board. So that's pretty consistent of what you have to do along with your group PowerPoint, which is designated already on a particular date. So week one, we'll be covering chapter one, start going through that. Uh, week two, the same. The only thing that changes is in week three, I skipped chapter three, it's ethics. I teach ethics, which is a separate course. Uh, so I'd rather focus more on the other fields of philosophy, not just ethics. So we're gonna jump ahead to chapter four in week three. So don't get confused on that. And then, It'll, see, it'll be kind of off for the rest. Week four, we'll be covering chapter five. Week five, chapter six, and then onward until we get to finals week. Um, the final paper is already set. The due date is May 14th. It's at 3 p.m. So make sure you submit your paper before 3 p.m. And you can look now on the requirements what's needed for the final paper. I highly recommend take a look at page 435 in the textbook. There's an instructions on how to write a philosophy paper that's going to be really helpful. Uh, we're going to be looking for it in your final paper. So that's the syllabus overall. Now, um, to kind of give you a little bit more uh, information on Blackboard, what you can find there. So announcements, and I already posted an announcement. Um, Make sure you keep an eye on announcements. If for some reason I have to move a test or whatever, or quiz or something, I will let you know on announcements right away. So keep an eye on your announcements. Uh, your grades, you can always check your grades here. The assignment due dates, uh, they're all here. So you can write down already have a copy of when everything is due. Uh, calendar helps you keep track. So you'll see when assignments are coming up. Um, email, you can email here directly other myself and other uh, students. So your group, you can contact each other using this email. SME study, these are just helpful extra websites that I like to provide students. So how much should you study a week, you know, to do well in this class? Take a look at this uh, handout that I have. It helps you calculate how many hours you should work out the schedule for yourself. That's, I cannot stress that enough. That's the best thing you can do to actually get through this course is keep consistent on the schedule. Don't let things power up on Sunday and try to do everything on Sunday. It's going to be a disaster. Trust me, and especially since we have a mini semester, be extra difficult for that. Uh, there's great videos on how to prepare for the semester. A lot of great stuff on YouTube. Um, what else? Uh, I went through the assignments. You can find quizzes, uh, discussion posts. Everything is here. So all the assignments, there's always a link there. And if it's not open up yet, check. make sure you check back on the syllabus and see when the assignment will open up. 
I will have, um, like I said, um, uh, video meetings uh, weekly for my office hours to come in. Um, you can see here, it'll, it's not open right now, but it'll be open at that time. You can come into the room and chat with me and I'll answer any questions. Uh, or if you want to schedule an appointment, you can do that as well. And then video lectures like this one that you're watching and other ones that I'll, where I'll cover some of the, the chapters, I will put it on your video lecture and I'll start adding those as we go. All right, so I think that's a good overall. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions and I hope you have a great semester.